The king's scribes were called in the first month on the thirteenth day thereof, and there was written according to all that Haman commanded to the king's Achshadrapans and to the governors that were over every province and to the princes of every people, to every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ahashiwarosh was it written, and it was sealed with the king's ring. And letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all Yehudim, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. A copy of the writing that the decree should be given out in every province was published to all the peoples, that they should be ready for that day. The posts went forth in haste by the king's command, and the decree was given out in Shushan of the palace, and the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. Esther chapter 4 now when Mardukai knew all that was done, Mardukai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. And he came even before the king's gate, for none might enter within the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's command and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Yehudim, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And Esther's maidens and her chamberlains came and told it her, and the queen was exceedingly grieved and she sent raiment to clothe Mardokai, and to take his sackcloth from off him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hathak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and charged him to go to Mardokai to know what this was, and why it was. So Hathak went forth to Mardokai to the broad place of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mardokai told him of all that had happened to him, and the exact sum of the money that Harman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Yehudim to destroy them. And he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given out in Shushan to destroy them, to show it to Hester, and to declare it to her, and to charge her that she should go into the king to make supplication to him, and to make request before him for her people. And Hathak came and told Esther the words of Mardukai. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a message to Mardukai, saying, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come to the king into the inner court who is not called, there is one law for him, that he be put to death, except those to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in to the king these thirty days. And they told to Mardukai Esther's words. Then Mardukai bade them return answer to Esther. Think not with thyself, 
that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Yehudim. For if silently thou be silent at this time, then will relief and deliverance arise to the Yehudim from another place. But thou and thy father's house will perish, and who knoweth whether thou art not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Hester bade them return answer to Mardokai, Go, gather together all the Yehudim, the ones found in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast in like manner, and so will I go in to the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mardokai went his way, and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now it was on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel, and stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the entrance of the house. And it was so, when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter.